Hi, good morning. Glad to have you here. Um, Texas is uh, is very willing to hear your story in Life Among the Cannibals. That's the name of the book. Boy, that's a harsh name, isn't it, Arlen? I mean, where, do, where do you come up with that? Uh, I come up with that because uh, the cannibals are controlling uh, Washington today uh, because they're devouring senators, and I am very specific in this book. Are they, in, are they on both sides, or is it one side that, that, that uh, you would call the cannibals? They're, invo- they're involved on both sides. You have a an outstanding senator like Bob Bennett in Utah with a 93% conservative rating, can't win a Republican primary. You have uh, Joe Lieberman, a terrific senator from Connecticut, can't win a Democratic primary. The uh, extremes have taken control of, uh, of government. Uh, Members of Congress are afraid to buck the party line because if they do, they'll be opposed in a primary uh, and defeated. The cannibals just drove uh, Olympia snow out of uh, out of Washington. And in this book, uh, Life Among the Cannibals, I tell how how the problem can be solved. It's uh, a, a situation arose in Alaska, which provides a microcosm for the answer. Senator Lisa Murkowski was opposed by the Tea Party in a primary and cannibalized, defeated. She came back on a write-in vote with a name like Murkowski, won a statewide uh, election, unprecedented in uh, in American history. And it shows that if the electorate is informed and aroused, that the center can take control. And that's what needs to be done across the country to make Congress function again. It's uh, former Senator Arlen Specter. The name of the book is Life Among the Cannibals. How is your health, by the way? My health is uh, excellent. Play uh, squash uh, almost uh, almost every day. You can, uh, I think, you can tell from my projection and voice that uh, still got the same old vigor. You sound good, my friend. Yeah, I dealt with cancer last year, and I was always I was interested in seeing how you're doing. Uh, it sounds like you're healthy. Sounds like you're 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 in good spirits, which is awesome. Let me ask you something: when when the Tea Party movement really sort of took uh, uh, took hold, and uh, and they were talking about smaller government and conservative values, and and uh, and 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 about you know not allowing the government to have overwhelming control and and act like a tyranny. Did that, did at first it sound like a good thing to you? Because I know that you're not happy about it now. Well, how did you feel about it at first? Uh, I think that there are a lot of good uh, uh, points in what you have just mentioned, that I think the uh, deficit and national debt have gotten out of control three times in the Senate. I voted for a constitutional amendment for a balanced budget. I'm very unhappy that President Obama appointed a commission co-chaired by my former colleague, Senator Alan Simpson, and then the president paid, paid no attention to it. Uh, but when you have the Tea Party running on a platform of no compromise, uh, that's the art of politics. I think uh, I think they have gone too far, and I think that uh, uh, when they cannibalize a Mike Castle in Delaware, he runs against a Tea Party candidate, a woman who has to defend herself as not being a witch. The uh, Club for Growth and the far right defeated Link Chafee when he ran for re-election in 2006 in Rhode Island turn control of the government over to the uh, Democrats. Had Chafee been elected, uh, Republicans would have retained control of the Senate, and I would have stayed on as chairman of the Judiciary Committee. So uh, there's got to be some balance. Well, I think uh, as we look at politics today, and as former Senator Arlen Specter, the name of the book is Life Among the Cannibals, a political career, a Tea Party uprising, and the end of governing as we know it. Uh, when you look at, at politics in 2012, I mean, it sounds like you're saying you should really be more in the middle and, and, and more of a moderate, no matter which side, whether you've got a D or an R under your name, whereas a lot of people in this day and age believe, look, I'm going to be hard left or I'm going to be hard right. How do you appeal to them, Senator, if uh, if you're sort of a moderate? Because I, gotta, well, I, I have to be honest with you, had I been a a Pennsylvania voter, I don't know because of your feelings on choice versus life and whatever, I don't know that you would have been my candidate. I mean, how do you get somebody like me, who's a conservative guy, if you want to be an R? Uh, by appealing to uh, a whole range of, of, of interest and a whole barrage of, of, of votes, uh, and uh, to show that uh, there is a lot more than a single issue. Uh, I supported... Uh, nominees for the Supreme Court like uh, Scalia right. uh, and Rehnquist and uh, uh, Thomas, even though they disagreed with me on pro-life, pro-choice issues. So right. there's, more, there's more than a single issue. It's a, matter, it's a matter of balance. 
And uh, whatever your political persuasion is, you can't be happy with what's going on in Washington. No, and I don't think anybody is, to be honest well, with you. you got, you, got a, you got a gridlock because nobody will compromise. And that's why I say America needs to be governed from the center. And Lisa Murkowski is the answer. Well, I'll say this, though, Senator. Uh, well, you, you've got uh, gridlock in Washington because the American people got tired of, the, of the, the liberals running over all of us like crazy. When it was Democrat Senate, Democrat House, and, and Democrat Obama in the White House, we had some of the most stark um, legislation forced down our throats that we've ever seen. That's why the midterm was such a bloodbath. The name of the book is Life Among the Cannibals. It's uh, former Senator Arlen Specter. Um, as we go forward, well, actually, as we look back on your career, when you made the decision to change the letter under your name from R to D. Was that a really hard decision or a really easy one for you? Oh, it was uh, tougher than hell. Uh, the uh, tough part came on the stimulus package, and I was convinced that if we didn't have a stimulus package, we'd have another depression. And uh, when I voted for the stimulus, uh, the bottom dropped out uh, for me and the Republican Party. Right. And uh, uh, for years, uh, Biden, whom I rode the train with, uh, Rendell, governor, uh, whom I gave his first job to out of law school, had tried to persuade me to become a Democrat, and I wanted to stay in the Senate to carry on my work on funding for the National Institute of Health, uh, lots of advances against cancer, the work I was doing on the co- on the Judiciary Committee, bringing uh, industry to Pennsylvania, and... Uh, uh, it didn't work out for me because in the Democratic primary, I wasn't liberal enough for the small number of people who came out to vote in it. Right. Wasn't conservative enough for the Republicans or liberal enough for the Democrats. So uh, I was cannibalized. That's what I write about. Well, what's interesting is uh, Reagan, who conservatives like me look to as, as our favorite or best president in our lifetimes, um, he was a guy who was able to, to welcome everybody into the tent. But, but Arlen, he was still very conservative. I mean, he was conservative with a smile and said, we'll take all of you. We'll take Reagan, Democrats, and moderates, and everybody else. But he still never changed his conservative stripes, did he? Yeah, but could uh, Reagan win a primary today? Could Goldwater win a Republican primary, that pro-choice of Barry Goldwater? Uh, one strike and you're out. Yeah. One vote among 10,000 and you're not pure enough. 93% uh, not good enough for uh, Utah Republicans, for Bob Bennett. I'm, I'm running towards the end here, and I know they're going to be, uh, you've got a lot of interviews to do. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you your thoughts on the, uh, it, it appears as though the conservative wing of the Supreme Court will find that Obamacare or the individual mandate is unconstitutional. You agree or disagree? Well, uh, it looks that way, but uh, Kennedy's probably swing, and uh, he started off being tough uh, on the bill, and then uh, at the end he sort of uh, modulated it. Uh, He's left himself some wiggle room. Kennedy would like to have it the Kennedy court. He likes to be the swing vote, and he's cast some decisions that uh, uh, make me think he's looking at history, at his uh, own stature. So, uh, What do you think should happen? he's He's got wiggle room. What do you think should happen? Uh, I think they ought to uphold the bill because I think it's a legitimate exercise of congressional authority under the Commerce Clause. You've had uh, uh, 60 years of interpretation, and it's constitutional. But uh, this court is ideological. Citizens United prove that they don't give a damn about precedent or congressional fact-finding. They're making laws there. And uh, uh, regrettably, the Constitution is what the Supreme Court says it is. So it's uh, anybody's guess. You flip a coin. And that's not the way the Constitution ought to be interpreted. It sounds to me like the Constitution, though, talks about commerce. As long as commerce happens, it sounds to me like the Obama administration is saying we're going to force you to enact, to, to take part in, co- in commerce. Therefore, we'll fine you and we'll, we'll penalize you if you don't take part. Is, I know you've got to go. Is there any reason why the media this morning is all abuzz about you saying something about Sarah Palin and a skirt? Is there? I mean, the media said you said something she was sensual or some crap. What, what is that about, Arlen? I have no idea. I didn't hear you say it. Well, what is that? Uh, I wrote about it in my book. Uh, I lightened up my book here and there, and uh, that's it, all they're it, talking about today. Well, well, uh, I'm uh, flattered, but it's very <laughs> prim and pristine and proper. I talk about introducing McCain and Palin at a big political rally. Uh, in 2008, and I talk about being in the Straight Talk Express and sitting in crowded quarters with uh, uh, Sarah Palin, and uh, you've seen the the length of her skirts, and uh, uh, it's a little titillating, but uh, but proper. But um, uh, you can read all about it if you get 
<laughs> Life Among the Cannibals, there are some good stories about Teddy Kennedy, we will, Fidel Castro, and some others.